When you think of five axis, do you think of this or this? Does this look like a five axis part to you? We want to change your mind about five axis. We want to change the way you think about what a five axis part really is. Take a look at this part. It's a classic example of what I'm talking about. Think about how you would make this part. How many setups does it require? If you only have a three axis mill, you've got to relocate this part four times to complete it. Each orientation of this part has features with critical tolerances that relate to features on other sides of the part. Each time I relocate it, I have another chance of making a mistake. With four setups, I have four chances at scrap. I waste a lot of time running parts this way. Cycle time really adds up when I have to recall cutting tools used in a previous operation. We're going to show you how multi-axis machining techniques took this part from four setups to two. The big advantage is that we only relocate this part once when machining finished features. Now I showed you how this was done in a three axis setup. Now let me show you how this is done in our five axis setup. I prepared the material because I'm using a dovetail fixture in my first operation. Cutting the dovetail shape and locating slot allows me to securely clamp the part using the least amount of material possible. I'm only cutting an eighth of an inch deep. The first operation is on the dovetail fixture on my two axis rotary table. Now I can cut features on five sides of this part. The last operation removes the dovetail and finishes features on the sixth side of the part. Five axis allows you to process jobs with fewer setups, increased accuracy, shorter cycle times, and less scrap. When we compare side by side, I shorten the cycle time by 21% using my five axis setup. The rest of this video series will focus on four main things you need to do to be successful. The first is configuration. What type of machine and rotary product combination is right for your application or which gives you the versatility you need for success? The second consideration is work holding. How will you hold the workpiece to present it to the machine spindle? In most cases, a standard mill vise will be inadequate for a number of reasons and we'll discuss all those details. The third is tooling. This mainly refers to tool holders. A standard length welded style tool holder is often not practical or even possible in five axis machining. We'll go in depth on tool holders to help you make the best choices when tooling up your five axis machine. Finally, and most critically, programming. You really need a cam system to program effectively and efficiently at more than one angle. The added benefit to programming in a cam system is that most provide full verification. You can import a machine model with kinematics into the system and verify that you don't have a collision with a tool holder or your work holding or something else. Haas Automation's very first product 34 years ago was a fourth axis indexer designed to integrate with milling machines. So we know about multi-axis machining, but we also know for people with little or no experience, it can seem like there's a lot of barriers. We put together this video series to help you break down those perceived barriers. Trust me, it's not as difficult as it seems. Don't fear five axis. Welcome back to our ongoing video series, Don't Fear Five Axis. Part of the fear some people have comes from what seems like too many options to choose from. What rotary do I choose? How big? And what machine do I pair that rotary with? Well, in this episode, we'll answer all those questions in plain English and get you on the path to making great five axis parts quickly. Let's get started. Of course, the best place to start is with your application. For this video, I've chosen this housing part as an example. Now, choosing a machine and rotary combination for a three plus two application is very much the same as choosing a machine for a three axis part. Part size dictates rotary size, rotary size dictates machine size. So what size rotary do I need for this part? Not surprisingly, when choosing a rotary table, you need to make sure that the workpiece fits inside the diameter of the rotary platter. In this graphic, the blue area represents the maximum part size of the rotary. So 
for my example here, my housing is one inch by two and a half by three inches. So I've chosen a TRT100 because it'll support a maximum five inch diameter part. Perfect. Now, if you're working on smaller parts that can be held in a 5C collet, Haas Automation has a full line of HA5C rotary products that utilize a 5C collet system for clamping the part. Like this T5C, for example. The units can be fitted with pneumatic collet closers and have a threaded nose to accept a five inch manual chuck. For larger workpieces, we make a variety of rotary tables with platters that range in size from 160 millimeters all the way up to 600 millimeter diameter. If you primarily work on round workpieces, consider an HRT A5 or A6 rotary product. These come standard with an A15 or A16 spindle nose, so chucks and collet chucks can be fitted directly on the spindle nose without an adapter. Our two axis rotary tables are divided into two categories, the TRT and the TR. TRT stands for tilt rotary table and TR stands for trunnion rotary. The basic difference is that on the trunnion, the tilt axis is supported on both ends, while on the TRT it's not. This design difference allows a much larger part swing diameter on the trunnion style rotary tables. What other options does Haas offer for five axis machining? Well, we build a line of dedicated five axis models, the UMC series. We also build five five axis models where the two axis rotary table can be removed, returning the machine to a three axis configuration with the standard mill table. This is the VFTR series. These models are packaged with options necessary for five axis like high speed machining, dynamic work offsets, and tool center point control. We also build a horizontal five axis configuration, the EC1600 ZT5AX. We pre-configure these models, but you can build your own. Any Haas mill can be configured as a five axis machine. Installing rotary products on Haas machines is easy. We'll cover that procedure and spotlight some rotary setup features in the control in another video in this series. As I said before, we need to consider the size of the rotary when choosing a machine. Now, the rotary may fit on the machine table, but how tall is it? It may take away valuable Z-axis clearance. Haas Automation offers a few extended clearance options to deal with this problem. On VF3 and VF4 size machines, we offer a low profile table option that adds three inches of clearance. And on VF6 through VF11 size machines, we offer a column riser option that adds eight inches of clearance. Now, none of these options add Z-axis travel. They just increase the table to spindle nose at the bottom of Z-axis travel. They work great when the rotary product's installed, especially if you have a tall fixture or long tool holders. But when you remove that rotary from the machine, you're left with a pretty large spindle nose to table distance. So remember, work holding like vices may need subplates or risers underneath them. Other considerations include how much floor space the mill will occupy and how much usable mill table space I need when the rotary is installed. A VF6 is a big machine. If I install a TR310 on that machine, I get a large five axis work envelope, but I have virtually no usable mill table space. On the other hand, if I install a TR200Y, I get my five axis and lots of table space. That's because that unit is designed to be installed with the tilt axis parallel to the Y axis. Again, it all comes down to what's more important, usable work envelope on the rotary or usable mill table space on the machine. Also, keep in mind that a larger rotary requires a larger lifting capacity to get that rotary on and off the machine. Don't always assume that bigger is better. So what's the best all around option for making both large and small parts? Here are my recommendations for five axis configurations based on work envelope. In the small part category, the TRT100 is the rotary of choice. It provides a five inch work envelope. I like this rotary installed on the DT2 machine because I get plenty of mill table space left over for a mill vise. Also, I take advantage of the high speed features in both the mill and the rotary. For work envelopes up to eight inches, the most versatile option is the TR200Y. 
I like this installed in a VF4 size machine because there's room for multiple vices on the table when this unit is installed with the tilt axis parallel to Y. Both of these configurations give you the flexibility to do three axis work and five axis work in the same machine without having to remove and replace the rotary unit during changeovers. For maximum versatility on a wide range of workpiece sizes, the UMC series is the best choice. These models come with a 500 millimeter diameter platter, which is plenty of room for two standard six inch mill vices when doing three axis work. If your machine workpiece is larger than eight inches, the UMC is the model for you. So, what options can I get that'll improve my five axis setup? I talked earlier about building your own five axis machine. Well, the following options will turn any three axis Haas mill into a five axis. Obviously, you'll need a two axis rotary table that fits inside the machine. Then, the mill needs to be configured with the fourth and fifth axis drive options to power the motors on the rotary. Personally, I would not buy a machine for five axis without the following options. They make life so much easier during setup and operation. The dynamic work offset and tool center point control option allows part location in the machine to vary from model location in the cam system. The control stores the machine rotary zero point and uses that information along with the work offsets to machine the parts in the correct location. This option makes setting up five axis jobs as simple as setting up three axis jobs, dramatically reducing setup time. The wireless intuitive probing system is also highly recommended, so much so that we made it a standard feature on our UMC series. You really need the probing system to accurately locate the machine rotary zero points. It also makes setting tool length and work offsets quick, easy, and very accurate. The probing system comes with visual programming templates to simplify functions like calibration and programming. The system also comes with a full suite of probing cycles for things like part inspection. The high-speed machining option is required for simultaneous five-axis toolpaths. It's also necessary for machining 3D surfaces. Essentially, it analyzes the feed rate, the length of block, and the change in direction from block to block to determine how much, if at all, the machine needs to alter the feed rate to stay on the programmed path. Imagine you're driving on a windy road for the first time. You don't know exactly where to speed up and slow down to make it through that section the fastest. But after a few passes, you know exactly where to brake and accelerate. And that's what high-speed machining does for your full five axis and 3D toolpaths. So, I've given you several things to consider when selecting a machine and rotary combination for multi-axis machining. What size rotary do I choose? Well, part size dictates rotary size. What machine do I choose? Consult the rotary fit chart. What other options does Haas Automation offer? Well, consider one of our dedicated five axis or a five axis model with a removable rotary table and extended clearance options. What's the best overall option for machining large and small work pieces? Review my recommendation and consider your need for available table space. And finally, what other options does Haas have for five axis? Well, select the options that simplify setup. They pay for themselves very, very quickly. Welcome to Don't Fear 5 Axis Part 3, Rotary Installation and Setup. In this episode, we'll show you some features in the Haas Control that make installing a two-axis rotary product on a three-axis Haas mill easy and convenient. Before we go any further, let's talk about the old way. We used to have to manually pick up the center of the rotary platter. Then we'd have to tilt the rotary axis up and pick up the face at 90 degrees and then pick it up again at minus 90 degrees and perform a manual calculation to find the center. Then we'd set the tool length offsets off of the platter or some surface of the fixture, and the z-axis work offset was the distance from that point to the center of rotation. But we're still not done. We have to go to the computer system and move the geometry to the exact same location in the computer as it is in the machine and post our code. Then, if anything moves, we've gotta go back to the computer, 
move the geometry again and repost. And if I need to make any small adjustments after I've cut apart, guess what? Back to the computer system, repost code, back to the machine, run another part. I don't have to worry about that anymore. Let's do a side-by-side -side comparison of the steps needed to machine a part both with and without DWO and TCPC. I've modeled my part in my CAM software with my X, Y, and Z axis coordinates located here on top of my part. Now, if I were to load this program in my machine, my part would be machined here, basically inside of the rotary fixture plate. That's not gonna work. I need my part to be held in a vise. When I modeled this part, I didn't know how tall or where my vise would be. Now my coordinates are easily five inches higher in Z. And don't forget, the fixture plate needs to rotate in order to machine the features on the side of my part. Once my rotary moved 90 degrees, this changes everything. Now my X, Y, and Z coordinates are in a completely different position compared to my original cam part. I definitely need to go back to my cam program and rethink this. But with DWO and TCPC, I simply add a G254 and the control automatically offsets the program for me in machine space. Regardless of how many rotary moves or what angles, my part will always be machined correctly. Now let's look at this animation a little closer. I'm using the same CAD file on both the right and left sides of the screen. The only difference is, on the right, DWO and TCPC has done all the work for me, locating my part correctly. This way, I don't care about the work holding. There's no need to run back and forth to my CAD system. With DWO and TCPC, I simply program my part once, and I'm always good to go. Now, let me show you a better way of setting up a two-axis rotary on a mill. My example today, we're going to use a TRT-100 in the DM1. First, I'm going to go to the Features page. You're going to need to have these four features enabled, 4th and 5th axis, high-speed machining, and the dynamic work offset and tool center point control options. Note, this page shows you if there's a tryout available and how much time is left. Before we can use the dynamic work offset and tool center point control feature we just talked about, we need to know where the rotary is inside the X, Y, and Z coordinate system. This is known as the Machine Rotary Zero Point, or MRZP. The mill's three linear axes move like this, X, Y, and Z. A rotary axis mounted here will rotate about the x-axis. This is an a-axis. A rotary mounted here rotates about the y-axis, so this is a b-axis. And a rotary mounted here will rotate about the z-axis. This is a c-axis. Get it? X, Y, Z, A, B, C. A about X, B about Y, and C about Z. The machine rotary zero point of each axis is defined by two coordinates. In this example, the A axis rotates about X. The center line of the A axis is defined by Y and Z axis coordinates. So the A axis MRZP can be anywhere along the A axis center line. It can be here or here. The same concept is true for the B axis center line and the C-axis centerline. The TRT-100 uses an A and C-axis. Once we locate the MRZP values for the A and C axes, we store these values in machine settings. The control will use these settings, along with the work offsets, to correctly machine the part. Now, we've called this video series Don't Fear 5-Axis for a reason. We hear over and over again folks don't want to invest in 5-Axis because it's hard, complicated, or confusing. One of the best things we can do to demystify this is to get familiar with the terminology. Now that we understand the A, B, and C axes, let's get familiar with some other terms like master and slave, fourth and fifth, tilt and rotary. You're gonna hear and read these terms all over the place, and I'm here to tell you they all mean the same thing. Tilt, fourth, and master are the same thing. Slave, fifth, and rotary are the same thing. 
These terms come from the fact that the rotary or fifth axis is mounted on and moves with the tilt or fourth axis. That's why the rotary axis is a slave to the tilt axis. So going back to our TRT-100, our A axis can be called the master, fourth, or tilt, and our C axis can be called the slave, rotary, or fifth. All right, now let's get to the fun stuff. Time to install the rotary. I'm gonna stone the table and make sure I don't have any high spots and then spray it down with some rust preventative oil and we should be ready to go. So I've got my rotary on the table and I snugged it down. I fed the cables up through the enclosure and made sure that I had a nice drape on the cables when the table was as far away as it's gonna get. Now I'm gonna shut down the power before I connect the rotary cables in the airline. Now, check out how easy we made setting up rotary files in the next generation control. On the rotary tab of the settings window, I have two boxes, current rotary selections and select new rotaries. This is a complete list of parameter files for every rotary product we make. Now, we're gonna set up a TRT100, so I'm gonna scroll down and find those files. There I am, TRT100 P3ROT, and TRT100 P3 TLT, tilt and rotary. Now, the tilt axis is always the fourth axis, so I'm gonna set that one up first. I scroll to that file and press enter. This brings up my table orientation window where I can tell it what axis letter it is and whether it's the fourth or the fifth axis. In this case, it's set up as an A axis, it's the fourth, which is what I want, so I press enter to select that. Then I scroll to the rotary axis file Press enter to select that one, and we can see it's set up as a C axis and a fifth axis. Again, exactly what I want. So I press enter. Now, I press emergency stop and F3 to activate the rotary files. The control will prompt me to reboot when it's done. And there we go. When the control reboots, all I need to do is go back to my rotary configuration page and press F4 to activate dynamic work offsets and tool center point control. This brings up a configuration window where I confirm that my configuration in the machine matches the image on the screen. It does, so I press enter to select and I'm all done. So I zero return the machine and it's obvious that the tilt axis is not flat. So I'm going to get my indicator out, I'm going to flatten that up, and I'll show you how to reset the home position. Okay, I've got my platter indicated nice and flat, right where I want it. I'm going to jog my indicator up and out of the way, and then I'm going to go back to my rotary setup page. I make sure that the fourth axis is highlighted, and I'm going to press insert to set TC offset. I press enter to accept the prompt on the screen, and it resets my tool changer offset. Now, when I zero return the axis, it's gonna return back to that flat position. With the A0 set when the platter is flat, I just have to rotate the A axis up to 90 degrees and indicate the platter parallel to the X axis. I tighten everything up and my rotary table installation is complete. Now let me show you a couple of simple solutions to common problems we incorporated in the next generation control. If I have a tall rotary or fixture in the machine, I'm worried about interference with the tool changer. If I have a rotary table or a fixture plate that I need to hang off the back of the machine table, I'm worried about running into the Z-axis way cover. There's now a tab on the settings page called user positions. Here, I can set positions for tool change, travel limits, and even the second home option if it's installed on the machine. I simply jog the machine to the position I want, scroll to the axis, and press F2 to set the position. When any of the tool change mid position settings have a value in them and a tool change is commanded, the machine will move to the tool change mid position first and then start the tool change sequence. Be sure to set a Z-axis tool change mid position if you need the Z-axis to move first in your tool change mid position sequence. The max user travel limit simply prevents the machine from traveling beyond the user defined limit. 
To make any of these settings inactive, simply highlight the setting and press the origin key. In order to use the dynamic work offset and tool center point control functions, we have to tell the control where the machine rotary zero point, or MRZP, is. We have a new VPS template called MRZP Probatrunion. All I have to do is select the number that matches the rotary model I've installed. Our setup here, we put a TRT100, so I select two and press enter. I scroll down to verify the correct model is chosen and scroll down again for the jogging instructions. I press the letter key of the axis I want to jog and press the hand jog key. Now I jog the spindle to the bore, the center of the rotary axis, and I'm ready to run the cycle. The template knows all the dimensions of the rotary model and even if it's an AC or BC configuration. The cycle will probe the center bore of the rotary and get the X and Y coordinates for the C axis. It'll probe the platter to find its location in Z and then retract and rotate the tilt axis to 90 and minus 90 degrees to find the center of X or Y. Just like that, it's finished and it wrote the MRZP values for settings 300 through 305 into macro variables 10,300 to 10,305. You just need to enter the values from the variables into the corresponding setting number. Now, the control knows where the MRZP is. When I set up a part, I just find the X, Y, and Z axis work offsets as established in the CAM system, and my part will be machined correctly. So, here's a quick recap. We talked about how dynamic work offsets and tool center point control make setting up a five axis job as easy as setting up a three axis job. We looked at the features page where I can find out what control options are installed on my machine and I can activate and deactivate a tryout period for options I haven't purchased yet. We talked about the different rotary axis configurations and how to use the rotary setup page when installing a rotary on the machine. We covered the user positions page where I can set up a tool change offset, travel limits, and the second home position. And finally, we discussed using probing cycles to find the machine rotary zero points. Well, that's all for today's episode. Be sure to join me next time on Don't Fear 5 Axis.